Hello everyone, welcome War Pets. I know you guys have been enjoying it. I've been loving them and we're gonna talk about what War Pets you should be going with different March types. Because actually we've been already at war on our season two new gameplay. We've been live streaming it. So we've had a ton of actual gameplay side with the War Pets and I've been using them with different matches. So I'm gonna give you my feedback on what I think you should be picking with your marches. So stay tuned for all that information. So yes, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons videos with me, Mr. Sneaker. I am an official Call of Dragons content creator. Kinda crazy to say still, but we've been enjoying the journey and you guys have been supporting me all the way since the beginning of the game. So thank you for all the support. And today though, we are going over war pets so as you can see i have a few war pets left i've got one more to capture still from um, the earlier video that you might have watched from the other day but we are going to talk about the pets that i've actually been using quite a lot and i'm going to give you the reasons what pets you should be running with different marches right so I'm going to go into the codex first. The codex is a really good way to actually just showcase you the pets. We're not going to discuss the, the major skills through here. We will talk about them though later on in the War Pet Sanctuary, right? So you've got the wild pets here as well as the lizards from the creeps, right? So you've got these sand lizards, thunder lizards, and venomous lizards, right? I'm just going to tell you guys right now, don't underappreciate these lizards. These lizards are ground-based, you know, um, war pets, but some of them are actually really, really good. Um, the one I really, really enjoy is Ice Lizard, and we're going to talk about Ice Lizard first and then the others. Ice Lizard is really, really cool because he has different stuff where, you know, your friendly legions can gain rage faster and stuff and different types of unique skills, which I'm going to showcase later, like Ice Core, but it's a really good AOE damage effect that's continuous damage as well over compared to like a blast. So this type of lizard, as you can imagine, is really good with magic based heroes, right? And when we look at the other lizards, like the venomous one, it, this one's a little bit bugged right now because it's supposed to be a physical or magical based, you know, skill. This is, says magic skill here and a lot of the other unique skills in the actual skill shop says magic but through testing for some reason it's dealing physical so it might be just a bug just to let you guys know but again i'm not gonna lie the venomous lizard is really really good you know it does some really cool effects for your march but the ones um that i want to talk about for a lot of other players is actually the thunder and the sand one it's going to sound a bit crazy, but these thunder and sand ones are very, very scary if you're a player that loves infantry or cavalry too. Um, these guys do some phenomenal AoE damage for your marches. They also give you some really cool buffs like the march speed. Um, you also, like the thunder one, if you want super heavy AoE damage, that's what the thunder one is basically all about. So it's a really good one with stuff like your uh, cavalry. That's what I've been trying it with. But the Ice Lizard, I'm going to say it again, honestly, don't underappreciate this lizard. I would use the Ice Lizard with Mages. I would use the Venomous Lizard at, with, at the moment with Mages or Archers, really good. Um, and then the Sand and the Thunder Lizard, you kind of want to use Cavalry, Infantry is really good. I've not tried Magic yet with the Thunder, but I'm expecting it to be good too. But those are just like the basic ones we're going to go over. The ones that I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering is the Wild War Pet. So let's go on to the main event, the ones that you guys have been waiting for. So the Berserker Fire Drake, I'm just going to say straight out, this thing is nuts. Uh, this guy is a little critter that is flying, which is really good because... Because he's flying, it works with, obviously, the flying units. So if you want flying cavalry, this is a really good one. Even with flying archers, this is a, a pretty good one. Um, just because of the, the buffs and the fact that it's a flying-based pet, right, means it's going to work and you can fly over terrain still. Um, but the thing is, with the Berserker Fear Drake, this thing is definitely one of the best war pets for cavalry. Uh, for cavalry alone, this does so much work for your march. 
it just gives your march a, a, a massive amount of damage a massive amount of utility too so i would not knock this down straight away the sophia uh, the yeah the sophia uh, Fedric, the blue one so this one is one that i don't personally like too much but it's still a good one um, the reason why this one's really good, I'm not going to lie, I always have been using this with my Waldir and my Valen. I've specifically kept Ice with Ice on purpose. And this thing does really good work with them. But you could do um, the Ice Lizard, for example, with your Lilia. So you have actually two pets here for two separate magic marches. So you can do something like that. Um, so if you're looking for a magic based war pet, rock the, uh, the fire drake. Um, when you go to the golden rock, this is personally one of my favorites. This thing is nuts because as you can see here, it allows you to do some really cool effects with like the damage taken as well as like the legion march speed buff as well as obviously the way it attacks. It's really cool. Um, but the thing with the golden rock is you get exuberance. Exuberance allows your march to just generate so much rage for free. And the fact is the Golden Rock skill as well for damage is really, really good. Um, there's been loads of reports, if you've checked out Mr. Shinshi42, a little shout out to him during the video. Um, he's done a lot of testing and his videos are really good for the data side. So if you want the data side, check him out. He does have loads of videos and live streams so far testing the data on all of these and the golden rock one is a physical based pet i'm going to say now and this thing is so good it's really good with any march that's physical i'm just going to say it out now if you want an archer put golden rock on them you want a ranged cavalry put golden rock on them you want even an infantry golden rock's still good you want even your um flying cavalry this thing is a monster with the flying cavalry and that's what i was rocking quite a lot right so i would recommend this for honestly most of the troop types because of actually its versatility and its physical base right so just make sure it's physical units that you're rocking it with and then the Snow Peak is, again, another... Is, these two are my top two favourites. I'm not going to lie. The two rocks are really good. Um, the Snow Peak, again, really good for archers more. So if you want a more archer-based one, this is the one you want to go for. But it's still really, really good with cavalry. It's insanely good with cavalry because of the way it works. Um, and then the Frost Bear and the Stripe Bear, these guys, honestly, as you can imagine, are for infantry. If you want your infantry to be very, very tanky, these are really, really good. Also, if you kind of want your cavalry to be tanky, these are going to be good. And that's just your normal cavalry, right? So this isn't flying based. This will be a ground based cavalry unit. So just remember that. So those are kind of like who you want to go with what marches. And we'll say why right now. So if we go out of the codex and go into the pet sanctuary, we're going to be able to go into the skill store, right? And in the skill store, and we're looking at skills, we're going to be able to see some of them for what we've been talking about. So terrible arrogance. This is the one we was talking about for the Berserker Fire Drake. So if you're a Berserker Fire Drake player, you kind of want this, especially if you are playing with Forandil. Forandil is just really good. Um, as a hero and terrible arrogance does a really good uh, synergistic you know effect with forandal and cavalry alone so this is why i'm saying to you guys rock this with cavalry um, feral exuberance as you can see is a rage and healing factor and the funny thing is if we look here i actually have one right now on my um golden rock so we look at the golden rock here, I have already got Feral Exuberance 1 star, that's plus 12, plus 12 healing, rage and healing factor. It's increased by luck, so obviously as you can imagine, right now what I need to do, which we're going to do in the video, is try and increase those stats. So those are kind of good, we've got some really good stats there, but I actually want luck, so we're going to try and roll again and try and keep the better luck. So there we go, we've got actually an advanced one, it's only two skills now instead of three i don't like that so we're gonna roll again now we've got three skills no skills and the looks are lower 
and then three skills again and everything's worse. So we don't like any of those, right? So we're gonna try and get the luck on it. But as you can see, this is a really powerful skill. You can put this on anyone and anyone wants that rage generation because you're gonna be dealing a ton of damage. I also have this when a crit rate when your legion deals physical counter attack damage. This is again, you can imagine with the archers now, you're gonna get crit rate on the counter attack damage from the Nico on skill four, as well as your Kanara on skill four, as well just your natural counter attack damage the cavalry have, they get it as well as you can see. So this is why I actually really, really like the Golden Rock skills and this is why I'm recommending it for all of the physical based stuff. When we go across now, we have Ruthless Follow-Up. This is another really powerful one. This is Crit Rate. And I believe this was from the, one of the Fae Drakes. I believe you can get this from. Same with the Magic Fortune. This one is the one you want. And this, if you get Magic Fortune with your War Pet, you need this on the Sapphire uh, Fae Drake or the Ice Lizard, if you can have it on the Ice Lizard. And the reason why I'm saying that you want that pet skill damage increase. And the, the crit rate's insane. And a lot of the damage that is applied by him, you'll be surprised about. You know, we could go into certain um, logs in the reports, and you can see even in the reports, the damage dealt to, you know, the different um, war pet. So if we go to this guy and go to the battle log here, Obviously, we've got our skills that rock off, but if we had a permanent skill, you'd be able to see a little circular icon, and that would be from your war pet hitting the, the button, right? So if we go to the right one, I think it's this one. Uh, battle log. Skill damage. Oh, I might have just not had enough time. We might have just killed it too quick, unfortunately. But... As you can imagine, you can see the skill damage there. A really good example, which I might put up on the video if we have the time to, is the uh, Pain Bloom. Pain Bloom's a really powerful skill, which I'm gonna showcase now. Um, it allows you to just do a ton of damage on a target. And the cool thing is, like the next time you trigger Pain Bloom, it does more, especially if you have Forceful Pain Bloom, right? So really, really good. Uh, skill to have on your like magic fade rakes it does a ton of damage and that's why we have those magic based skills so i hope that gives you guys a little bit of a direction i'm not gonna lie i know it's confusing even for me i'm still learning it as you can imagine day by day um but we've got a really good way of you know understanding what we want so I've done a video on all the skills already. I've done a video obviously on war pets in general. And this is gonna be the video as you can imagine for your different pairings. So if you're looking for like my heroes, as you can see, I have my golden rock uh, my, or my snow peak. That's on my fear because she's been used for cavalry as well as my archers quite a lot. So we've been rocking that. You'll notice on here, we have the Berserker Phaedric on the Cavalry, which is really cool. Here, we'll have the Golden Rock on the Freg, uh, uh, on the Fregar, or we'll have the Snow Peak. It just depends on what we're using in PvP. I currently have the Ice Lizard, as you can see, a really good setup I have for it. As you can see, Ice Core is a very powerful, continuous damage spell for a Mage March. And this is only, again, the base of it, right? This is the common version, and it's doing quite a lot of damage already, as well as, you know, we mitigate through some of the attack, so we can hit a little bit harder too. So again, Fae Drake, if you've got the Sapphire, Fae Drake can fit this slot too. But I had my Sapphire Fae Drake on Valen. I've actually kept Ice on Ice, and I really do like this setup. It's really good, especially if you run Valen a while there with the Sapphire Fae Drake. You can get a chance to get an extra shield, you know, the make you um, even tankier because of the shielded effect. So it's a really good one to have honestly on that match and obviously if you can get pain blast or pain bloom and the forceful pain bloom skills this pet would be absolutely fantastic right in the future so we can try and inherit those obviously and work towards them so that's what we're going to be doing here we had the bear as you can imagine on our infantry and here's the other bird as you can see we had on our back chair. So here, if we was going to use Kanara, I would just use the bird and the bird. You know, any of these birds would be fine. As well as even potentially, you know, the Drake might be fine too, depending on your skill setup, right? It's always down to the skills, even though we've recommended it for, you know, for cavalry. 
you can not maybe run arrogance. Maybe you skip arrogance and actually run seven common skills and just give that like insane amount of buff and stats towards your legion, right? So I hope that explains it all for you. That is the war pet uh, tier. I wouldn't say tier list, but that's just a nice rounded guide for you guys so you can see what pets I've been running with what marches. We've been doing a lot of PvP with them, so we've been getting a lot of success. And we've been slowly upgrading and capturing them at the beginning of the new season in season two. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And if you haven't checked out the other video, it was all about the skills, how the skills work. Check it out. You know, you might learn something again if you've not checked it. So with all that, smash the like, comment, and subscribe, guys, for more daily Cobb Dragons content. And until the next video, stay safe, stay thinking, and peace out.